Hey, hey, Blue Table fans. It's the, this is, by the way, this looks like a wreck on camera, but it all makes sense to me, and that's the uh, thing that's important. So I'm prepping this 41-piece Trollbloods army, and by the way, that is a lot of points of Trollbloods. And, um, so, uh, yeah, you don't get to see my gorgeous face, I know, everybody's all disappointed about that. So a lot of these guys have gaps on them, like on the sides, because they're these old, you know, metal things. You know, and so what I do, let's see if I can just, find, here's one. So what I do is I carefully, without getting it on his foot, I just put super glue across the side, like on both sides, and a little bit of it goes into the crack, and then I just put it in my uh, sand, and it forms like the cement, and it's not focusing well, but you, you get the idea. And then once I put grass on top of that, uh, then it, it, it covers the, the gap. And that's really a quick and dirty way of closing the gaps on guys like this. Quite frankly, I think it's, I think it's a terrible design flaw to create a model that, you know, has those gaps. Like, well, just, just make that little tab long enough, for pity's sake. So anyway, here's one with a giant gap in it. There you go. And so for that one, what I do is I create like a length of, like a thin length of cork like that. There you go again, not focusing that well. And then I just bisect it with my X-Acto knife, being careful, of course, not to cut myself. And it works great if you put a fresh blade in. And then you just kind of rip it apart like that. And you end up with this, like this really thin piece of cork, like a 16th inch, you know, maybe, maybe a little bit more than that. And then uh, I just take the long piece, put glue on either side of the gap, and then and I go a little bit further, meaning I put on more glue than is needed along either side. And here's why. Because once I tuck that in there, oh, that is like way too big of a piece of cork. You know, it's, it's okay. It, look, it looks okay. Uh, and then I put glue on top of it and off to the side, and then I create like... So I create this cement out of texture that goes over. Now this got on the edge of the base, so I'm just going to quickly take that off with my finger. So now, what you, let's see if I can get that on there. Now what you end up with is you put the cork on, and then you put super glue from here, the top of the cork, all the way off to the side by a, like a ways, and then and then I dipped it into the sand. So now that helps cement this piece of cork on there and also disguise the edges of the cork. And that is the secret of good corking, is that it looks like natural rock, and not like a piece of cork that you glue. And I gotta tell you, that's like, if I had pet peeves, that would be one of them, would be people that just, they just slap cork on there. This looks like rock, blah. And it's like, no, no, it doesn't. You've gotta do a little, just a little bit of extra effort to, you know, make it look realistic. Oh, and here's my white glue. Perfect. Okay, now I'm now that I've filled in all the gaps and oh, I'm going to need to put cork on these guys. So, again, this is going to be like the most uninteresting thing ever that you're ever going to watch in your entire lives. It's going to be really bad. But you said you wanted painting with Sean. Oh, I, I'm still not giving you painting with Sean, am I? Oh, well. That's how it is. So, how have I been, you ask? I've been exactly as I've chosen to be. A couple days ago, I got up, I'm like, today is going to be terrible. And guess what it was? It's exactly what you expect it to be. Attitude determines altitude. So I'm giving this client a little extra. This is a guy from Valhalla who's come to like four Valhallas. And, you know, just the nicest guy you could possibly want to meet. His name is Tyler. And... Uh, yeah, really a Valhalla staple. So Valhalla was October 3rd through 7th. Um, they couldn't get the cabin for a Monday through Saturday. We just did a Monday through Friday. But, you know, those of you that have been watching for a while will remember that we used to do them just for three or four days. Like you'd get there on Monday and you'd be leaving on Thursday. And that's, that was not long. Like the guests were just like, this is not long enough. But, of course, it costs extra to put, you know... Our, our original Valhalla tickets were $350, and now it's in excess of 1000 to come for a week. 
And guess what? Demand? Demand is now like huge for this event. And of course the market's not going to leave a vacuum very long. There's going to be other people doing them. And guess what? They're going to find out exactly how much they have to suffer to make this happen. And I doubt many of them will last. Well, and in a way, I didn't last, you know. I got to a point where I, I definitely didn't want to do them anymore. And it was, you know, but if you do it through Kickstarter, that does get rid of a lot of the risk. It either funds and makes it or it doesn't. But I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be tough to get people out there. But then again, you know, now that I've shown that it's a real thing and can really happen and, you know, how awesome it is, uh, I think that'll that'll really help. So it's nice to uh, to have improved the industry, and I think that's um, well. Some might say that's a, a big part of the purpose of life is to leave the place better than you found it. You know, and right now, as you guys know, I think I mentioned this before. I'm just enjoying life. I'm enjoying an incredible life, like I have not had before. It's really neat. A lot of peace. Uh, I love the people that I work with. They make me happy to think about them. Um, like literally, when I'm feeling sad, I'm like, I think about my artists, you know, how great they are. <laughs> and, um, you know, got good relationships with all my kids. That makes me happy. I'm going out with the ex-wife tomorrow. We uh, stay in touch. And I gotta tell you, that's a relationship. If you're divorced, that's a relationship you wanna keep up. But of course, you know, I guess most people get divorced because the relationship wasn't going great to begin with. But, you know, uh, I, I think that I, I have to take responsibility for... Um, by the way, you'll notice this is taking me, you know, this is going pretty quick to put the quirk on these guys. And I'm not doing it on all of them. I'm just, you know, some of them have like big, like open spaces on their bases. So I'm putting, and when you do, when you have the cork like that, it makes like this really thin, rocky formation. It doesn't elevate them so much. Like this gal, this came, this already came corked. Uh, and so she has this pretty thick sheet on her that goes all around. Like covers almost the entire base. That, that's what I mean by quote, all around. So uh, Miranda at Valhalla was making fun of this guy because in a game where inches and charges make, you know, a big difference, they've made this giant club that just sticks out, you know, and you can't turn them because facing matters too. So yeah, that guy's, that guy's pretty horribly designed. Uh, yeah, come on guys, if you're designing a minute, like if you're sculpting a miniature, it takes a while to sculpt it, you know, certainly you have time to think of these things. But, you know, sometimes it's uh, easier said than done, you know. It's easy, it's easy to sit in your armchair and gripe about everything, you know. And uh, really get a different matter if you're actually going to get out there and do something with yourself, you know. So, um, I wanted to debut Ultimate D&D at Valhalla this year, but... I did, I just didn't get, I just didn't get to it, you know, and with the BTP, I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm doing everything, like, I pack the packages, I answer all, every single email, answer every single call, and uh, it's really uh, helping get rid of the, the backlog, because all those, all those resources are going into production, and that is really getting the company into good shape, makes me happy inside, and I, I can see it. I can see it. It's easy to, it's easy to sort of, uh, sort of, get all depressed when things aren't the way they should be. You know, it seems like you're not making progress. Men especially uh, don't deal well with futility. You know, if they're if they're doing everything they can and it's still not budging, it's like that's guys don't guys don't deal well with that. Oh, there you go. I like this. This guy was put on like a solid base. You know. All these, by the way, are getting re... Oh, it's sticking to the table. No, it came off good. All of these. And by the way, when I'm doing stuff like this, I keep a little container for garbage nearby. You know. Oh, hello. And the, and the, the little metal things are too thick for the bases. They have to be clipped. I mean, that's just... Come on, guys. That's not, that's not great. 
And since I'm clipping metal off to replace my shears after this, they're getting really doled out. But, you know, on the other hand, well, this is the hobby, is, you know, you got to be ready to do a few repairs and go with the flow. It's not, it's not a perfect, it's not a perfect science. Ooh, that's, that's really a nice rock. I'm going to put that on this big guy here. So, you know, just the little extra mile things to make a, make a project. Nice. So at BTP, okay, here's just a little bit of information for you in case you ever decide to do a commission, is we have two different types of bases. We have basic bases, which are free, and I think there's like five or nine types of those. We used to have tons. We used to have like 20 of them. It was ridiculous. And then we have, so basic base would be like rubble, which is black edge, black rocks, that's it. And a surprising amount of people want that. And then there's Battlefield, which is brown edge, brown rocks, green grass in patches. And then there's Deadlands, which is brown edge, gray rocks, patches of dead grass. That's a good one for fantasy. Deadlands has always been one of my favorite ones. And when we have a Flickr page with pictures of all these uh, styles on them. And then you have a decorative base. Now, a decorative base is really just an upgrade. It means you're putting on, like what I'm doing here, you're putting on like some cork, you'd put on like a skull or something. So like, you know, so if, so if a client said, hey, I want decorative bases on all hundred of my guys, and then the artist came to me and he's like, hey, I did corking on all of them, like a piece of cork, I would be like, Where, where's the imagination? You gotta put like skulls or like little pieces of wreckage or barbed wire. You gotta put some different things on them. Can't just like piece of cork does not a decoration make over a hundred guys. If they did it on a lot, well, and it depends on the on the narrative too. Like what I'm doing here is actually it's actually good corking. I'm putting in some effort to to distress it and to put it in you know natural looking poses there. So a little little bit of imagination needs to go into into every bite. So, huh, okay, and then there are, there's uh, dioramic bases. So a decorative base could go on either a basic or specialty base. Oh, I think you almost saw my beautiful face. Oh, hi. Oh, <laughs> then you're like, ah, oh, I can see every blemish. It's high definition. Why did you do that? I could have gone my whole life. My whole life, I will have nightmares about that. You know, so I had this dream the other night, and um, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm up at Valhalla. I go into my cabin, and it was, and this is just part of a much larger dream. And I'm like, Kyle, what are you doing in my bed? It's like I'm not Kyle. I'm Scarlett Johansson. And I'm like, Scarlett Johansson, what are you doing in my bed? Why, why are you talking like Dr. Evil? Because I'm your perfect woman. Anyway. <laughs> uh, come on. You can't make that stuff up. Actually, you, you definitely can make that stuff up. I, I just did. So, uh, what else? Oh, and then there are, uh, you can get resin bases. I actually, like, I, I think if somebody's going to really invest in an army, you should go secretweaponminiatures.com. They have so many great bases. I actually think it's the best place to go for bases. Uh, but there are other companies, other bases. Now that GW's been doing 30 mils, oh, that just thrown a wrench. Like, all those companies now have to make 30 mils for all the 30 different kinds of bases that they've created over the years. <laughs> You're so dirty, Games Workshop. Why are you like that? Why are you so dirty? And so, but Games Workshop is actually starting to put out some really good toppers uh, for the bases, and I like them. I actually wanna, I actually wanna trim. Wow, I have put decorations on almost all of these now. And you might think, Sean, why are you just doing corking? Why are you doing skulls and stuff? Okay, listen. Because this is, I'm just do, I'm doing it as a favor. But, and also I just don't have that stuff handy at this particular moment as I'm trying to prep these guys. So there you go. That's the truth. Okay.
Now, and then there are uh, narrative bases. So a narrative base could be on any type, but they're, they're hard to, to do. A narrative base tells a story. So if the guy is crushing, you know, an orc face under his foot and the client said, hey, my friend plays orcs, that's a narrative base. He's beat, he, they're beating an orc army. So, uh, and then you can do dioramic bases, which like are for huge things that like really tell a story. You know, might use, that typically use whole models to create a diorama, as you, and you guys know what that is. All right, time to texture, baby. Let's do this. So I'm gonna get up my little pieces here. And I keep like a little tiny, not a tiny, but I keep like a two inch brush here just to, I'm like the Bob Ross of miniatures. Actually, I bet, I bet somebody else has claimed that title. But oh well, I'm, I'm saying it too. Yeah, that's a happy little rock. That's where he wants to be. He's just gonna be there. So, okay, let's get a palette. Show you guys how, how it's done. Come on now. Going to zip that open. Get my exacto out of the way. I used to love, like, because I'd have a cardboard protector on my uh, workstation, and I used to love to just javelin my my exacto knife into it just to say if I could get it. Oh, this is one of my kids. It's one of my kids calling me. Let's see what they want. Hello? Hey, how's it going? Da -da -da. So what's going on? Okay, can you hold on a second? Hold, hold on just a second. Okay, I gotta turn down the volume. There we go. Okay, tell me your intriguing news. Ooh, nice, okay. Some of your friends are D&D and Warhammer fans. Got it? And? Oh, bring your parents to lunch. Okay. So you realize today is Wednesday. You're talking about next Wednesday, right? Okay, got it. Oh, okay. Do you want me to bring some of my goodies? Oh, yeah. I'll bring, like, a ton of stuff. It'll be great. Okay, good. But I don't have to bring enough to, like, play a whole game, right? I would just bring stuff to show. Am I giving a presentation in front of the class? Oh, it's just lunch. So I bring like a couple bins of my figures and eat lunch with you and show them to your buddies. Okay, I'm more than happy to do it for you, love. Just text me the details, okay? Or was there anything else? Yeah, you. I'm telling you right now, I'm 100% going to be there. There's no doubt. I love you. You're important to me. I will make time for you. Yeah, you bet. I love you, darling. I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye. Well, there you go. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I was uh, watching The Flash. Oh, here's Katie. Is today still a good day to meet, she says. Yes, I'm home until 9, let's say 8 p.m. There you go. I got Rick coming over, too, to go through this trade. I got this huge Space Marine trade. Okay. Hold on. Just got to keep up on my correspondence, guys. All right, so what I do, basing is like real easy. First off, I always take off the cap, the whole thing, just dump it on. In fact, I'm going to do that. Nobody's got time to fight that stupid little Elmer's glue nozzle, you know. Oh, okay, so I put a bunch on. 
and oh it smells amazing that brings back good memories okay good memories of sniffing glue I guess okay and then now I want to get out of my giant wad of paint did you enjoy looking at the back of my head there gross okay good so here's a cr kind of a crusty brush so by the way I just have boxes and boxes of brushes it's disgusting so I put my water here uh, where am I gonna put my sand there you go there's the sand okay so I just um, create like a pool of water here and you know then I just water it down a little bit and this is really a boring process guys without getting it on the edge or the guy I put uh, this this brush is not working at all I actually need a bullet brush so let's see if I can not give you a shot of the back of my head oh, okay so uh, yeah I think that one's a lot better here I'm using this brush instead there you go and just going to get my glue and without getting it on the guy or the edge of the base I am going to mop my glue on so you come on you come at it at a pretty acute angle the trick is going to be getting it around their feet here okay and then I swish it through my texture well wow, I might run out of texture it's pretty bad I had like a 100 pound tub of texture and uh, one of my guys just he just he just never brought it back you know I'm like hey are you gonna bring that back no answer so anyway but you know what you can't grouse about stuff like that you just gotta move on so I do but I do need to get more texture it's all out with the artist right now well and the other thing is you don't have to put glue and texture on every single nanometer of the base you can actually you know leave some bald spots put put grass on those bald spots that actually works that actually works really good so but this is a great opportunity to cover up the gaps in the model like where it was poorly designed and um, also um, no nope, there is no also okay what was I talking about oh by the way that was my 17 year old daughter it's weird to think she's gonna be like out of you know she's gonna be an adult soon you know and um, she's really a genius in her own right it's funny the kids the kids are doing good you know you imagine that they think you know as a parent sometimes you imagine they need you more than they really do but then on the other hand you know they probably need you more than they understand you know they, but I, I let my kids regulate that I just make myself really available and make sure that they can get as much of me as they want I'm um, right now I am looking forward to getting my studio going again but again productivity is really the you know it's really the main focus right now and that guy looks good what's my time so it's easy to kind of slow down and just and then four hours later be like oh that's all I got accomplished I'm never gonna get these guys done which by the way is like the leading cause of people they're like I'm gonna be a solo painter I'm gonna paint miniatures for a living well guess what I hope you keep we got a good stopwatch because you have to keep pace or you get behind and I think that's what kills a lot of the solo places you know gotta, gotta keep going okay good yeah th these are like all crowded around here and by the way there is an inefficiency here which is that my texture is kind of far away but you know I'm gonna live with that just for this one time so what you do is you count in your head when you start a process and I like to restart the count from guy to guy when I make contact with the next model so I'll show you that in just a second when I finish this guy oh no I got some on his feet I am going to have to double check that and swift it off with a second brush if it got yeah it did get on his feet and I gotta tell you watch out don't be one of my artists and come back 
you know, and if you're an assembler and have sand on their feet, because I'll be like, oh yeah, it'll it'll be uncomfortable. I'll be like, um, I just I, I just want to know if you see this, you know, and um, you don't want to be condescending, but it is imp it is actually important to know if the artist, you know, is like a actually is able to sort of quality control themselves rather than just doing whatever and then you know turning it in something I look for with uh, new hires too like can they follow directions will they will they actually pay attention you know and I do that I make that part of the interview and application process Whew. so Valhalla well I've talked about Valhalla just to death but what I'm doing, people say, hey, what are you doing next, John? And where I'm feeling confident and really want to go is to start doing my ultimate fantasy role-playing idea. i got to be careful not to say ultimate D&D because D&D is a trademark that's owned by, I don't know who it is, I'm pretty sure it's Wizards of the Coast now. So i got to be respectful of that. But... Uh, at the same time, you know, we all grew up on D&D, so it's kind of it's kind of become a common experience. You know, so back in 2012 or 20 yeah, 2011, 2012, we had Valhalla's up at Sundance, and it was a a six bedroom cabin. And there's a lot of cabins up there, but we we really did find the best one. And so But the problem, and that's actually where Mini Wargaming started coming, and a lot of our other guests too, uh, Wargamer Girl, I actually met them at, I think it was, I think it was Adepticon 2012, and you can find this video, you can find this video on my channel of me interviewing Miranda, and she looks so uncomfortable. And what I have since discovered is that Miranda's thing is is organizing stuff ahead of time for a polished presentation. So you can imagine why she makes a great coordinator for Valhalla. Is let me tell you, every every detail has been tended to with that girl. So she like I just I was just like, hey, let's do an interview. She's like, good. I'm like, okay, I'm setting up the camera now. She's like, what? I'm like, oh, don't 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 worry about a thing. I, I'll, I'll carry it, and uh, you just sort of go along with what I'm doing. And she's like, what? And then that red light came on, and it was, it was too late. I had already started going. And uh, so look, look, that, look that one up. It's good. Put, put the link in the comments section, if you would. So Valhalla. Okay, so Ultimate Fantasy Role Playing works a little something like this. Uh, I don't need 20 people to come or 40 people. By the way, there were there were 39 souls at Valhalla this year, and we have sort of looked at well, we um, it's like 50 is kind of the outside. So guys, what's going to happen is Valhalla is going to get better and better, but it is going to be harder and harder to get on that roster. So start start now. That demand is like going up. Well, and you can meet that by doing several a year, but then that sort of splits people's attention. And uh, right now, it looks like it's just going to be October's. We, uh, yeah, every October. That's October's. So you don't usually hear months as plurals. So, uh, so Sundance. So what it would be is I would create an adventure and base it off of one of the classics, but update it and and then create miniatures and terrain for the whole thing. Right now I have right around 250, excuse me, 250 uh, miniatures for it that are painted up. They do need, a lot of them do need some touch up. They need to be rebased because I want the bases to be consistent with where you actually find that creature or whatever it is, NPC. And I also want them all to be on round bases. And right now all the bases are inconsistent. 
but the paint jobs are great and the miniatures are interesting. What my, my, uh, my status, excuse me, my requirement for miniatures is that they be really high quality and that they be um, evocative, like they're, they're unusual or interesting sculpts. And, or like really good ones. And so I'm hunting high and low for the best sculpts. And so it's an event. So I create the adventure. I create all the terrain for it. So there's no like whiteboard. There's no low quality stuff to this. It's all like the best that you can get. And as far as I know, this hasn't really been done. Not to the not to the level that I'm going to do it. And it's like, you remember the old Rackham Cry Havoc books? That's, that's the level of terrain that I'm going to aspire to, is that Rackham level of stuff, which is like real artisanship. Uh, what I lack right now is a workshop to do it in. So I'm putting that out there. If anybody, I, I, and if, I don't care where you are in the US, Montana would be good. Idaho would be good. Salt Lake City area, Utah, would be even better. But if you have a workshop and you want to be a part of what I'm doing and have me make some terrain for you, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to pack it all up on a moving van and come out to you. And so in a way, I, I'm, I'm looking for a patron. And so don't worry, I would still make sure everybody's projects were done. But guess what? I only have a very... I, I've got a pretty tight loadout right now. <laughs> um, hold on. Oh, that guy's kilt is so low. Wow, I'm cracking these guys. Oh, man, my texturing looks so good. These guys are going to look great, especially once I get all the grass and stuff on there. So, um... So then there will be there will be six slots available. So each person will buy a ticket, and I just need to figure out the expenses and then divide that into the thing. So it'll be five or six days. It's going to be five days of RPGing. So probably Monday through Saturday to give us that extra day to unwind. And I'm going to run you through the adventure of your life. It's going to be great, and I have so many good ideas for it. I don't know if you guys know this, but back in the 90s, I was a puzzle maker for a CD-ROM company. So that is part of my specialty. I can actually make make some pretty good puzzles. And but that's it. Well, it won't be a puzzle adventure. I'm just saying that you know that element of adv an adventure will be represented and represented well. So, I'll have an adventuring party of six. I imagine what I'll have is I'll have groups that come out to do it. And what I want is, once I make an adventure, and I, if I'm doing it multiple times in a year, I won't have to redo the train every time. I'll, I'll just be running the same thing. And I want to run it as a challenge. I'd love it if a group came in and they actually became so involved with that world that they scheduled me for, you know, like two times a year to come out. Maybe even get 